Hello everyone, welcome to my video on finding the least square solutions. And today I will show you how to actually mathematically find the function, the optimal function that best fits our data points. So first, let me explain what this means. So as you can see here in, on this green graph, there is a function of a green curve here, and you can see that the red are the data points. And what we're trying to do is find this function f such that the sum, where you can see the s is right here, the sum is the minimum is this amount where it is basically the difference between this data point and the va y value on this curve, and we we square that difference, and we're supposed to find the minimum value of s. So let's kind of see how this works in a very simple example, and let's consider a linear case. So for example, let's consider a, cr a line, a straight line, where y is equal to mx plus b. So as an example, you can kind of see that if I create a line there, then we'll call this f, right? And then let's say that maybe we wanted a few data points. And I'll and let's just say that we got these data points from a lab or experiment or so something like that. And let's just say that we got maybe like a few of these, right? And we say that these red are our data points. And we'll call each data point at its coordinate, comma, x, y, y, i. So that way we know that when there's an i on the bottom, we know that this is a data point. And of course, um, we're trying to figure out the minimum value of s such that it is equal to the sum of n data points of this y value minus f, which is this a value, and we're trying to square. So in, in essence, we're trying to compute the residual between these two, and we're just squaring it, and we're just summing each one of them. Right? And if we sum all of them, we, then we should get an s. And we want to find the function f where it has these constants such that s is a minimum. So let's see how this works. So first, we need to derive what s is. Right, and we just plug it in. So y i minus, and then f of x, in this case, is a linear case, so we write mx plus b. Right, and we uh, simplify this, so then we get the summation of y i squared minus 2 y i mx plus b plus mx plus b squared, right? And then if we simplify this a little bit more, then we get yi squared minus 2myix minus 2byi plus m squared x squared plus 2mbx plus b squared. And we're trying to sum all of this. And so if we, um, and one thing to keep in mind is that x and y, in this case, are simply just the data points. And so we treat them as something we have to add in within the summation. And we assume that in this case, m and b are values that we already know. And so hence, assuming that we know what m and b are, which we actually don't know, but we'll just assume that we do, we can kind of bring them outside the summation as if they're a constant. So then we get, summation, and I'll just skip the i and n, just for, just for simplicity, the y i squared, and then the 2 and the m are constant, so minus 2m summation of y i x, and then 2 and b are also summation, so it's minus 2b summation y, same thing, plus m squared summation x squared, plus 2mb summation of x, and in this case, well, we know that the summation of b squared n times is really just a constant times n itself. So it's just plus b squared n. Where I remind you that the summation of any constant c summed n times is just equal to cn. So it's kind of like that. Right? And great. So now we have a sum s. And this sum s tells you the sum of the squares of the difference between the data point and the fun and the y value of that function, or that of that least squares function, I guess, right? And we have to find the values 
M and B such that S is a minimum. And so, in order to find a minimum, we know that for a multivariable calculus, that when S is a minimum, the gradient of S is equal to zero. In other words, it just tells us that the partial derivative of S with respect to M is zero. The partial derivative of S with respect to B equals it to zero. So that's what the gradient of S equals the zero vector means. And also, uh, we technically know that for S to be a minimum, technically, the partial, the second partial derivatives have to be positive. And we also know that, anyway, uh, anyway, but uh, although we could technically verify this, I won't just for, just for, um, just for time's sakes, but you could technically verify it on your own. But anyway, but doing the, but finding the two partial derivatives, this is the necessary part. Um, this partial derivative of S with respect to M. We can see here that this doesn't have an M, so it's constant. So the derivative of this is zero. This is simply just re removing the M because the derivative of a variable is just a constant. So it is minus two, the summation of Y, I, X. There's no M here, so we can, so that derivative of that term is zero. The derivative of this term is 2m summation x squared. And the derivative of this term is 2b summation of x, right? Because the derivative of m is just a constant. So uh, 2b summation of x. And of course, the last term does not have an m, so the derivative of that is 0. And of course, we know this is 0, so we'll come back to that. And then we do the other partial derivative, because we also know that this has to equal 0. So we do the same thing. The first term does not have a b, so the derivative of that is zero. The next term is also zero because not, it does not have a b. The third term has negative two b summation of y, so we just do the derivative of that, which is minus two summation of y. The next term uh, does not have a b, so the summation, so the derivative of that is zero. And the second to last term has a b, so it is plus two m summation of x, and the derivative of b squared n is plus two b n. And of course, we know that the partial derivative of s with respect to b is zero. All right, cool. So we can rewrite this as an as a system of equations. So first, let's add this to the other side, and this one too. And we know that each term has a two, so we, could, we so we might as well just divide every term by two. And hence, we end up getting uh, let's see, m summation of x squared, which is right there, plus b summation of x equals summation of y i x and the other one is m summation of x plus b n equals the summation of y i guess what my friends we're pretty much done guess what because what because what, what we're really trying to find here is this values of m and b so that way we know that s is a minimum which tells us that we find we that we found this function that's the best fit for these data points. And so hence, this is actually this is actually it pretty much. All we need to do is just write them in a matrix form. And so we can so also and I also want you to note that we're finding these values. And technically, if we know a given set of data points, x, i, and y r are pretty much just constants, if anything. If you just put in your calculator and just add up all the sums, the relevant sums. So hence, we can put summation of x squared, summation of x, summation of x, and summation of, uh, of n. Sorry, sorry, not summation of n, just n. And then we multiply by the matrix, no, sorry, not matrix, vector of m and b. And of course, the product is just this and this. So it's just summation of y, i, x, summation of y, i. Call this vector a. Sorry, not vector, a matrix. Call this matrix A, call this matrix X, and call this matrix, sorry, call this vector B. Then we can find the answer to M and B by simply doing, which implies that as long as the determinant of A is not equal to zero, which implies that A is invertible, then we get the answer that we want, X, which has the values of m and b, which is what we were looking for in the first place, is equal to the ma inverse of matrix A times the vector B. And that, my friend, is exactly how you can find the solution 
to the least square solution that we wanted in the first place. All right, and I know this was, this was a little bit conceptual, but on my website, on the calculus blog page, I do have a, I do have a blog that's titled um, least square solution. And there's a PDF that has an example of this exact type of linear case. So I want you to take a look at that. And so that way you can understand how do we compute this in practice. And also, although um, I will end it here shortly, but I do want you to know that on my other PDF, which is just a single variable least squares, we will also consider other cases, such as what if we wanted to um, optimize the function of ax squared plus bx plus c, which is a quadratic equation? Or what if, if we wanted to find f as a general polynomial? Is there like a system and a pattern that we can find? And, and we will also consider what happens if we wanted to consider a polar curve. Anyway, but my whole point though is that this PDF has a lot of information and the other PDF has four. Has four real life applications So there's, there are four real application examples that I will give you so that way you can see how data fitting is such an important aspect in understanding our physical world in a mathematical sense. All right, so hopefully you will get to enjoy that on those PDFs. And I also have a graphing thing and a code that allows you to um, kind of test it out and see how it works. So hopefully um, you will take a look at that and you will find them very interesting to, you know, just understand things. All right, everyone, um, that's it for today. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe if you, can, if you want to. And I encourage you to read my website and have fun, you know, have fun exploring math. All right, everyone, have a nice day. Bye.